Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. Cheating wife before and after the wedding, plus the death of my friend, the affair partner. Me, 26 male, and my wife, 25 female, have been married just over a month. My friend, 25 male, worked with me for three years, and was one of my best friends. Too long to read. My wife has been cheating on me months before the wedding. So we were laying in bed and she received a message from one of my friends and immediately swiped up. I asked her what it was and to see it. She told me she wants to protect his privacy. I reminded her that she's my wife, and we should never hide anything, especially messages from other dudes she freaked out saying, you know, trust me, I can't believe this. I'm sleeping on the couch, and she deleted everything off her phone between him and her and blocked him on everything. Next day rolls around and she's mad at me, and I'm still mad at her. I man up and tell her she's lost some of my trust, but if she's being honest that it really was nothing, I would forgive her if I can see the message. She deleted them all and blocked him. My gut was screaming at me, but I put it aside and the rest of the day goes on well and without incident. The next day, I woke up from a call from a coworker, different coworker, that my friend killed himself the night before. I was dumbfounded and shocked. I saw him two days before, and we were talking about his half day he was taking to go fishing. I could tell that my wife was taking it hard too, and I thought it was odd because she's only met him three or four times and didn't talk much about it with her. A few days later, the day after we celebrated our one month, I get a call from the wife saying, Hey, please don't go over to girl's house. I need to talk to you first. I'm confused and say, I don't know what she's talking about. Then the girl of my friend saying she needs to talk to me and unloads information that my wife and friend have been talking for months. I go over and she shows me the messages there were. I can't wait for a future together. I can't wait to meet our children. I love you and nudes and all that. Talking about how magical the other day was. I was scrolling through the messages for about 30 minutes and didn't even get to the end of the week. But the last text he sent was to my wife saying, I love you. This isn't your fault. I went home and she was gone. I went on a two-day bender with no contact with her. Besides the occasional drunk, you broke me, texts for me, and no contact with anyone else. I call my family, tell them what happened. They are worried about me, understandable, and they just keep asking if I have my guns in the house and all that. I reassure them that I'm not a danger to myself just needed a few days to decompress. They put me in contact with their lawyer, and close to six hours of talking to him, I decided to file for divorce. Last night, I got a message from her that said, I want to work through this, and we should both go to individual and couples counseling. I have a message her back. I'm terrified that she will try to take me over the coals, but I hope that she is civil about everything and says, my stuff is mine. Your stuff is yours. I hope to God that she isn't pregnant too. So I'm sitting at home with my two dogs waiting for a call from my lawyer saying that she has been served. Let's check with some comments. WTF that Canuck says, ask your lawyer about pursuing an enrollment. Adara Rose Omnibus says, only reason she wants back with you is because she can't have him. Please remember that. And I think you can get an enrollment. Kranich chimes in. You are aware that she only wants to get back with you because her plan A has taken his life and is no longer available. Right? I'm very sorry that you are in this position. No one deserves this. If she should be pregnant, then demand a DNA test before you do anything else. Stay in close contact with your lawyer and do exactly what they tell you to do. Take care to never be in a situation where you are alone with her. Who knows what she is up to? Change the locks of your house so that she can't come over and surprise you. Don't message her back. She had her chance and made her decision months ago. You need to protect yourself now. Please stay away from alcohol and drugs. They won't help you now. You need a clear head now more than ever. Ask friends and family for support and to spend time with you. 
don't be alone all the time. You are worth so much more than to be treated this way. Last comment from the fixer. 123,456. She blames you for being paranoid. She cheats, she bails, and now wants to come back home because plan A has gone. You deserve better. Moving on to the next story. Sending my cheating girlfriend to the streets. Did I make the right choice? Me, male 19 and my girlfriend, female 18, have been dating for five months. Everything was amazing. I loved her, and I thought she loved me. She was my first, but I've seen a lot of toxic relationships for my mother over the years constantly cheated on. And she tried to fix it never worked. I always had to comfort. Well, my girlfriend in the last month was telling me she felt like I didn't love her, and then I was going to leave her. I always, no matter what, reassured her of my commitment and love, but there were a few incidents where guys were being inappropriate over text and she wasn't stopping them. I would get upset by this and ask her to stop contacting these people for obvious reasons and told her that even though I love her, I won't deal with her talking to guys who want to sleep with her or have bad mouth me. She understood that if I seen this again, we were over. Unfortunately, just a few days ago, I was up earlier than her and her phone got a message. I had a gut feeling to check, and sure enough, it was a guy on Snapchat asking when they could hang again. I ignored this and scrolled up a bit to see that not only have they hung out before without my knowledge, but she was referring to me as her roommate. I was so crushed as I thought things would get better. But aside from the Snapchat guy, a guy the first had previously told to stop messaging was still talking to her through an archived chat on Messenger. I woke her up and told her we were done, and she needed to be out by the end of the day. I left the room to her and walked away. She was sobbing, and I felt like a terrible person, but the feeling of betrayal was also prominent. She told me she only talked to Snapchat guy for nicotine pods, and the Messenger guy was a family friend from work. They kept in mind was constantly making remarks about her body. I won't lie. I'm devastated, and I want her back so bad, but I just can't shake the feeling that I need to let go. Thoughts Want some thoughts? We got some thoughts. No Boys in Barry 6440 says she was referring to me as her roommate. You are not her boyfriend, and she treats you like that. Find someone who will care about you. I know it hurts, but in a few months, you'll be happy you didn't take her back. Honey Malone has a thought. The only reason I would call my boyfriend something else that implies we have a merely platonic relationship such as a friend or roommate is to hide the fact that, well, he is my boyfriend. Now why would I do that to a guy that's overtly flirting with me? Exactly. To insinuate that things are allowed to happen between us or at least continue leading him on. Obviously, if there's no reason to bring up my relationship status, I wouldn't just randomly shove it in people's faces that I'm dating someone. However, in cases like this where I would want someone to stop pursuing anything with me, I want 1000% would. This would be my thought process. Hopefully, this demonstrates that the decision you made, in my opinion, was the right one. You deserve someone that respects you and is happy to show off the fact that you are their boyfriend. Good luck in healing quickly and finding someone better. Cut Representative 377 has the last comment for us. Man, I empathize with your situation, but I had to tell you not to go down that road she truly cared about you. She would not be in contact with those people on Snapchat. People with low self-esteem like her will always make up excuses to justify their cheating. Her saying the other was a family friend is a cliché excuse of someone she is already cheating with. She will keep on talking to these people and cheating with them to make herself feel like she is worth something. All right, on to the next story. Do I tell his wife? Sony BX wife is a cheater. It started three years ago. I caught her more than once with more than one guy each time she would beg to stay. Me it'll never happen again, 
blah blah blah. Well, last month, I caught her again and kicked her out. I don't know who all she cheated with, probably more than one, but I do know one of them. He works with her, is married with children, and his wife just got done beating cancer. Here's my question. Do I tell his wife? And if so, how? I don't know the extent of it. I'm not sure if it is just emotional or physical too. Two years ago, I noticed from a phone bill that they'd had texted each other about a thousand times in one month. She told me nothing physical happened. Now that she has moved out, my teenage daughter saw her sending a racy pic to this guy. Instagram stalked him and then asked me about him after. As much as I tried to keep my daughter out of this, she did all that before talking to me about it. She's also insisting I tell his wife, but I don't have any evidence to show her. I would have killed to have someone tell me, but what do I do when I have nothing concrete to show her? I'm also going through divorce and don't want to nuke the process as it is still cordial now between us. What do I do? Reddit. I prefer to do it anonymously. I only have his wife's Facebook account. Is there a good way to do this? Again, I don't want my divorce turning into a nightmare because of this. Asking for advice. Well, here it comes. Find Cannabis Grower says, as you know too well, cheating as abuse. His wife is being abused and having her health endangered without knowing. Give her the knowledge she needs, even if you can't provide the evidence she might want. Odds are, she already has a feeling. Gorilla Grip Girl Parts 3000 says, you don't need hard evidence. A lot of times, nobody ever gets anything irrefutable and concrete, but it's still enough. Only good can come of outing cheaters. There may be fallout, but it's a net good always. Mr. Niz says dear yourself a huge favor and wait wait until the ink is dry on the divorce agreement. Once that is finalized and there is no risk of it becoming acrimonious, then you tell the wife. She will be angry. You didn't tell her sooner. Tell her you were in the midst of a divorce and didn't want to fuel your sonaback's wife's retaliation. Tell her, you've observed this behavior, multiple texts, sexting, stalking. It's not proof of anything in itself, but given that your soon-to-be ex-wife has committed adultery several times, it is not something to just dismiss as nothing either. Be courteous. You definitely owe her some consideration for humanity's sake but you also have to take care of your own issues in family first if at all possible. Don't do anything to sabotage that now, that the finish line is in sight. And, lastly, from Hastard Lands, the factors are irrelevant you are in that position already. If someone knew about your wife's infidelity, wouldn't you want them to tell you? There is no real question of it being the right or wrong thing to do. Try to get evidence. If you can't tell her in the most direct way you possibly can, give her a phone call. Or if you know the place she works, give them a call and ask if you could speak to her.